All right, so if I'm going to just work on top of my sketch, but I have a clear vision of what I want in Illustrator, these are the tools I can use to digitally ink in Illustrator with a lot of accuracy, but they take a lot of practice and I'm not great at some of them. I've mentioned before, my favorite tool is the pencil tool. So if I use the pencil tool and just draw the silhouette, let's start with this shape out here. I can basically freehand it. And wait until the path closes. And then depending on how I have the pencil tool set, I have it set to be pretty smooth. It will give me the, the shape, right? Now that's very different than this because that is the reverse. So what I can do now is I can take that shape and I can convert it, swap it from being a filled path to being an outlined path. Oh, I have to select it first and then convert it. And then I can play with the thickness of that outline. Make that stroke really thick. And then I can simplify that by converting that outline stroke into a filled path. So to do that, you go to pa object path, and then you say outline the stroke, which takes the stroke I just made and turns it into a filled path with an inside and an outside edge. Then that can be softened, right? To kind of match what I've got going on here. So with my pencil tool, I can then play with this droop and smooth it in a little bit. And on the inside edge, I can give it a little bit more detail where it's dripping and how far. So that's how you might make a really detailed cutout shape with the pencil tool. But it starts with the overall outline and then goes from there. So I want that to dip down a little bit and then turn into a drip. Okay, now what about this really big shape in the middle? This head, or, or let's just talk about the speech bubble. What if I use the pen tool? So the pen tool allows me, instead of the pencil tool, which is more free form, it allows me to plot a point and then connect it with straight lines or connect the dots and drag out with a curved line. And do that over and over again. But the problem is those dots are going to change a lot. So when you're using the uh, pen tool, you can convert. Let me just close the path. <laughs> it's easy to lose your way, but I need to close the path before I finish this up. There we go. OK, so the problem is once you set a curve, it's going to automatically have a curve for the next one until you convert it or change it. So while you're in the pen tool, you can hold down command to get to the small selection tool, which allows you to move individual anchors, right, and change them. And you can hold that option for what's the, called the convert anchor point tool, because you'll see that these anchors don't have any handles at all. They're just straights. So if I use the convert anchor, it will give me handles to them after the fact. But then I have to use the small selection tool to move those anchors where I need them. Oops. 
This is the hardest part in Illustrator. It's getting precise selections with the small selection tool. So I'm still in the pen tool, but I'm holding down command. So it's a small selection tool. I have to float over the anchor to grab it and move it. So that's a bit of a pain. But if you're really fastidious, the pen tool might be the one for you. And ultimately, it gives you control of every aspect of every anchor point. And your vectors are only made of anchor points. And then the vectors, the things that connect between them. Also, if you hover over with the pen tool, if you hover over an anchor point, you'll see that little minus sign. That's for deleting anchor points you don't need. If you, if you are on the pen tool and you hover over an existing path, you'll see a little plus sign that adds a new anchor point for you that you can manipulate if you need more definition. So for instance, here I can add an anchor point and then I can hold down option and convert it and stretch it out so that I have some curves to play with. And then I can hold down command and move it into place. and hold down option to convert it. Hold down command to change it from a curve into a straight, on and on and on. If I zoom in, you'll see some of the complicated things that happen here. There we go, I gotta flatten it out this way. And then move that handle in. Hmm. Maybe just move this whole anchor point to flatten it out. So that's with the pen tool. But then of course you can always Smooth it out with the pencil tool to get what you want, as long as you start on the path and end on the path. But you don't get as much control about where the anchor points go. Now, if I want to see my drawing underneath, I have to go to my transparency and just set it to about 50% or so, so I can see my outline underneath. And I can do that with any of the tools. So the pencil tool is my favorite, but I can get really precision results with the pen tool. Let me give you another example. With the pen tool, I could make a perfect speech bubble if I'm not trying to match my sketch. So while I'm making it, I'm using option to convert the anchor point. Then I go to where I think is the side and I make it a perfect curve. Then I convert the anchor point. Go down to what I think is the middle. Then find the other side and curve it. Find what I want the base of my stem to be. And then hold down option, I'm sorry, command to play with the handles. Get them exactly where I want them. And basically the fewer anchor points you have, the cleaner your shapes will be. So by making it with the pen tool, this speech bubble only has one, two, three, four, five, six anchor points in all, all of which I can carefully manage and try to make as perfect as possible.
but you have to be so careful where you click on this pen tool. And you know that might be a better one than what I have. Right. So you can have multiple options. So I'm going to turn off this one just for the time being. And then with the large selection tool, I can always stretch it, and that won't add any anchor points. And I can rotate it, and that won't add any anchor points. OK. Now let's try the body itself using this pen tool. I'll start at the, the point on the beak, because that's difficult to do with the pencil tool, to do a one anchor kind of angle transition. So I start here, I'm going to go here and curve it. Then I'm going to go up here, but immediately hold down Option to convert it. Whoops. Let's go back. <laughs> so actually, immediately hold down Command. Let's see. Best way. Let's plot the point, make sure it's a curve. There we go. I'm going to kind of double up that curve, but then I can immediately hold down Command and move this handle in. And then I can continue my shape. Anytime I want to be able to work with curves, I have to click and drag a little bit. Click and drag a little bit. Click and drag a little bit. So getting these complex shapes with the pen tool. And at any time, I can hold down Command while I'm doing it and alter the curves, which are sometimes necessary. To get it exactly what I want. Okay, this is a tricky one. There we go. Kind of reverse it. Hold down Command. Move this. Oops. Got to click right on the right place. Move that handle all the way in. Move this one down a little bit. Ah. Okay, now I can continue. I lost it at some point. There we go. Now we can continue. That curve, but I pushed that too far, so I'm going to use that small selection tool holding down Command. And you can see I am not very fast at this because it's, I prefer the pencil tool. But to each their own. We continue the path, create our curves as we need. And so on and so on until we get to the point where, that's a pretty complex shape, where we can close the loop. 